Let's return to Alaska. Are there any effects of the dividend on the kind of Alaska's democracy? And what about inequality in Alaska? Even if the dividend is not enough for a living, does it influence the situation with poverty? It very much influences the situation with poverty, uh, the poverty situation in Alaska. The, uh, there's very good evidence for that. Alaska is only the 10th wealthiest state but it has the lowest poverty rate. And it is the most economically equal of all 50 states in the United States. And it is the only state where economic equality has been, has been increasing. That means the state has been getting more equal. All the other 49 states in the US have been getting more unequal over the last two or three decades, and Alaska has been getting more equal um, and has this low poverty rate. And both of those are partially attributable to the, to the uh, basic income that exists in Alaska. The, they call it the permanent fund dividend. Uh, and it's, it's not hard to see that if you take the permanent fund dividend away from people who are making $10,000 a year or $15,000 a year, you're taking a, a dividend which is usually $1,500 for each person, and that could be $6,000 for a family, that's a big chunk of income for a lot of families, for the poor families in Alaska. And that makes a real difference. No, it's not enough to live on, but it is enough to make a big difference. I see. And which influence does it have to democracy? Is there something different? Well, um, that there's not such clear data on. Uh, the, you can get clear economic data on how it, something like this chunk of money affects economic inequality and poverty. You can't get perfect data on that, but you can get some, you get some very good data on that. But how it affects democracy is much harder to research. Um, I, you do get a sense. I've been to Alaska, and while I was there, you know, I was there to study the permanent fund dividend. So I'm around asking people, uh, what do you think of the permanent fund dividend? Uh, and they think of that as something they own. And the permanent fund dividend is financed by the Alaska Permanent Fund, which has been this growing fund from oil revenue that's been accumulating since the 1970s and getting bigger and bigger. Even though they're paying the dividends, it gets bigger every year because the dividends that they pay out are on average smaller than what they're making. So it's getting bigger and they're depositing new oil revenues in it. It's getting bigger and the people feel more like they own that than other things. Even though the schools are for the people, the roads are for the people, uh, so many things that the state owns are for the people, but this goes so directly to all the people that they feel like they own it. Um, now, whether that makes them get more engaged with other politics or not, I don't know. Uh, it certainly can. If it, uh, having a basic income to free up your time, it can increase your interest in politics. It can, but I can't point you into any in, into any evidence that shows that that is happening. Oh, we, we know it's a possibility, but it's very hard to find out if it's really going on.